You think this connected to the other two murders? Remember me? Yeah. Yeah. What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of TSC. We have right here on Zoom a very special guest. She's an actor. You may know her from her work with Tyler Perry. You may know her from Young Justice. And now you may know her from the new film titled Hashtag Unknown, now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. We are talking to actor Denise Boutte. Denise, thank you so much for joining us. How's everything going? Thank you for having me, Fred. And thank you so much for pronouncing my last name correctly. I appreciate you. <laughs> I, I do what I can. We talked about you it all. Already, <laughs> look, you already got a fan of me, Fred. So it's all good, man. It's all good. But it's no, Boutte. thank you for it's having Bo me. For yes. sure. For sure. It's yes. Boutte. For any other broadcasters that I see that say booty or booty, not. It's Boutte. We got it Stop right. Stop calling me booty. Stop calling me bout. Boots is Boutte. <laughs> the bougie not, way of saying booty. Boutte. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and not only are we calling you Denise, but maybe we got to call you DA Helen Rawlings because you star in the brand new film from Laser Lazan from Master P, Romeo Miller, titled Hashtag Unknown. Now streaming, you can rent it or buy on Amazon Prime Video. Can you tell us a little bit about your role and why you decided to star in this psychological thriller? This chick is sketchy. I love sketchy <laughs> chick. <laughs> but you know what it is? In all seriousness, I had worked with Laz, the director, on another movie that is still streaming. And it's like one of the number one movies on BET Plus right now. But um, he and I worked together on a, uh, it was a love story actually called Never and Again. So Master P was also associated with that particular uh, project. And so I think whenever, you know, we finally met, it kind of became like a, a family affair. You know, I met his wife, Tad, and, you know, we all just kind of kept in touch. And so whenever he came back around and said, you know what, I have this movie, you know, that I think you would be perfect for. I was like, okay. He was like, and I think P would be perfect for it. I was like, okay. And so basically he, he retweaked or worked the movie in a way that, I mean, honestly, I would have never in a million years have thought this thing would work, but it does. Like it, it comes off seamlessly. And when I tell you it is a thriller and will have you on the edge of your seats the entire time, I mean, I was trying to put the pieces of this puzzle, puzzle together because it's not a uh, cookie cutter. Like with the way this thing starts and the way that you think it's going to play out is not quite what it is. Like it takes you on a left turn, like real quick. And Whenever I first got approached by Les to do this, he was like, okay, so you're going to be the DA, he's going to be the mayor, and this, that, and the other. I was like, okay, so how does this fit into, you know, the unknown version that you see? Don't worry about that. I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, okay, I'm type A personality. You got to tell me, okay, how is this actually going? Don't worry about it. He was like, I know what you can do. I know what you're capable of. I saw what you did on Never and Again. He was like, you and Pete, just go ahead and play ball. I was like, okay, well, he's only going to give me so much information. And so that's pretty much what it was. And if I had worked with him before, I probably would have been like, you know what? I don't trust this dude. I don't know what the hell he's talking about or what he has going on in his mind because I need to know how this plays out. Okay. Again, type A, I got to know these things. Right. But because we had, you know, developed this, you know, family type relationship, I'd worked with P already. I consider him family because we're both from Louisiana. We just got on set and just did a free fall like that. That's pretty much what we did. And so it was just awesome. It was really fun. Um, P was there like, you know, the chicks come to set earlier than anybody else because we got to do hair and makeup and all this stuff. P wasn't scheduled to come until an hour and a half later. P was there. Like when I showed up on set, I was like, oh, what time? Oh, oh, I was like, he's early. Like he's very early. I'm always at least 10, 15 minutes early to set. But he was just ready. You know what I'm saying? And so when we started sparring and we started, you know, making this thing happen and finding the tone of it, you know, for ourselves. And uh, one of the funny things is that at one point we were, you know, playing with a, a dialogue and I was like, okay, Pete, you're sketchy. I'm sketchy. Like these characters, uh, something right. Okay. I was like, so what I want you to do is I'm going to give you a pass. Okay. You a good guy now. You got, you know, you, you a daddy. You give to the community. Like you do all these things. Like treat me as if you are just starting over. And I am one of your, your talents. And I'm giving you your money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so pretend I'm that 
chick that is not giving you your cut. He was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, when, that's when all the magic began to happen. I mean, the hardest thing for me was to make sure I didn't like start laughing before Lazio cut because it was just, it was just so wrong. But as a woman, sometimes you got to give, you know, folks the liberty to do just that. You know, folks are so uptight now and have to be so cautious. And it was just like, dude, let's have fun. And that's what we did. So it was, it was really awesome to, you know, come full circle or whatever and get to play ball with those guys again. Sounds like an, an awesome process. I'm not going to spoil the that's film. Fun. I did watch it, but the that Master P does have one line at the beginning of the film. That's just hilarious. And it's so Master P. <laughs> and, and that's when he came up with that one line. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. When he, uh, <laughs> was allowed when he got permission to take it there. That's when he took it there. So, hey, what you going to do? <laughs> and I was told by Laz that most of this film was done during the pandemic, which obviously was super chaotic before the vaccine, before we really knew what was kind of going on and everything. What were some of the challenges that you faced as an actor being on that set? Well, you know what? I will say that I, <laughs> I'm i still COVID crazy, okay? There's still a lot of things. I mean, I still go to the grocery store, seriously, with latex gloves on. Don't ask me what that's going to do. Don't ask me what that's going to prevent, whatever, okay? We know the science now, so it's probably doing crap, okay? But I do it. Everything is about what makes you comfortable. And so that's the thing. Whenever you know that the folks that are controlling the set behind the scenes are taking the necessary precautions and you yourself as a talent are doing whatever it is that you feel is necessary to make you comfortable, then it's fine. You know what I'm saying? I think that's where we are with this whole pandemic situation. You have to do what you're comfortable with. Don't judge the next person. You do you, right? And so I was very blessed and fortunate. Like I had finished and wrapped a film right before the pandemic hit. Like um, I think it was end of February, the right before. See, 2020 is a blur. I'm like, when the hell did it happen? So 20, top of 2020. And I did like four films, like during the pandemic, like there were several, I know, don't ask, <laughs> I have no idea. I just prayed, gave it to Jesus. And thankfully protocols were followed, but I, I'm really, really staunch about that. And I was, just, again, very, very fortunate, very, very blessed. Um, and again, a lot of the safety protocols that were already put into place, as is said, they did not only follow those, but they took it to next level. So that's how you, uh, that's how, you know, you're working with good people. You know, we're not going to do just the bare minimum. We're going to do whatever it is that is necessary to keep our, our, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera safe. So, you know, that I knew what kind of people these were that I was working with. And so it was just like a no brainer that I'd say yes. Psychologically, is it tough as an actor, even as talented as you are to go from a romantic comedy to a psychological thriller where it's kind of like a very different mood. You got to get in a different mindset. You know, what's crazy. Fred, I've done it all like that. That's why sometimes, I mean, this is not a, Oh, whoa, me. No, but I have been like in the trenches duking this out. I have done everything, every, I mean, I still, they had a girl just cuss me out the other day. Cause she was like, I see what you did to, you know, Trina. I, just, I see what you did to Sheila. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Like <laughs> this was like 10 years ago, you know, but as an actor, I'm like, wow, what a, a flattering thing to know that people are still pissed at me for what I did to Sheila. And why did I get married for God's sake? You know, that's a testimony for an actor. And I have done it all. I've been for, I don't know, like four years, I was the chick that stole your men and stole your money. Like that was me. Okay. Anytime I got cast, I was still a men. I was still a money. All right. The next part was the, you know, goofy black chick or whatever that can't dance has no rhythm. That was me. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, then I did the, you know, serious, you know, heavy stuff like crying because, you know, between the dog died to everybody else died or whatever. I was just crying every single scene. And it's like, I wanted to show people I had range. I wasn't the person that should be boxed in. I, I even like, um, what do you call it? Uh, Faith-based, you know, type stuff. I've pretty much run the gamut and done it all. You were talking earlier or whatever about Young Justice. I do voiceovers. I am not the chick you put in a box, okay? I can do it. And I say that all the time. I might be flying under the radar to a certain degree, but I can kick some ass, okay? If anybody has taken time, and again, it's not me like tooting, not, you know, tooting my own horn or being, you know, 
like, you know, I'm the bomb and stuff, but you gotta feel like you bring in something important in order to take these roles and feel confident that you're gonna show up on set. I mean, and if you're the lead in a film, you gotta make sure that you're the one toting this load or whatever. You gotta make sure that everybody around you knows that you're gonna bring it. You know what I'm saying? Or else they're gonna be associated with a piece of crap that's on Rotten Tomatoes, you know? So you gotta be really confident in your skill set. And so I honestly, I have done it all. The only part that I was hoping for and I got the opportunity recently was I wanted to play somebody down and out, just grungy, hit the bottom. Okay, it's just just this bottom chick, right? And I was like, I want my Charlize Theron monster, okay? May not be, you know, may not be a list walking on the red carpet with Charlize, but I want the opportunity to show people that I can go from still men, still money, you know, flashy, tight, you know, chick, to down in the dumps, just grummy chick. And it wasn't about the shoes. It wasn't about the hair. It wasn't about the wardrobe. It was about the performance. And I, I doubted myself. Like this was the first time that I actually was like, can I pull it off? And when I got a pause on that set after that first take, I was like, oh, oh, you know, it was just, it was, it was just such a, a win. And so gratifying to know that I could do that. So I love it. You know, every time I, I'm looking into a job, I just wonder what it is because I love all those different facets. For me, it's an outlet. For Miss Type A personality, my acting is the outlet. It is my free fall. It's the way to just kind of let go of all the control freak mechanisms I have and just have fun and live vicariously through these crazy characters. <laughs> That, that that's fantastic I, I love that i mean you're so, you're so passionate about it and of, and of course i can attest to that just watching your work you definitely have incredible ranges i'm sure a lot of fans can Thank attest you. to as well and you have great range as far as your career because yeah i went on the google machine a little bit <laughs> and yeah you know, to go from medical school to being one hell of an actor is is quite the jump especially because in medical school of course i only use it take a whole whole lot of time a whole lot of money i mean you're a lot of time you're, that's a totally different route from acting. So <laughs> what made you say back in the day, you know what, this medical thing's not really working out. I'm going to jump into acting where there's really no safety net. Right. You know what? Honestly, my life has no rhyme or reason. I just, <laughs> I laugh all the time. You know, the person that wants to control everything and put everything, you know, highlighted and, and bullet pointed. I've always, and this sounds like philosophical, but no, I, I've always like handled my business on one side, but I've always been very open to not signs, but just kind of things that make me say, hmm. And in life, you know that like there's certain, you know, different points in your life where you can go left or you can go right. OK, and we have to make a decision. And I would say that I've been very fortunate and blessed to recognize those sparks in the road. And when they presented themselves, like, for instance, yes. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do, Fred. I'm just being honest with you. I'm a little backwoods country girl in Louisiana. Thank God I got a scholarship or whatever to go to school because we would have never been able to afford it, okay? But in my mind, okay, when parents talked about their kid and they were just successful and they were proud, they were a doctor or a lawyer, okay? So my country ass just said, pick one. Okay, I don't really like to read that much, so I'm not going to law school. So Dorothy, I'm gonna be a doctor. Well, what my not so bright behind thought was, I don't want to read that. Okay, well, you got just as much, if not more reading as a doctor, okay? I didn't want to be a doctor. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So once I got into school, I met other people, you know, beyond my little farm community. I started getting exposed to people and new ways of thinking. And that's when I found out about communications. As you can tell, I can talk. So it was like mass communication, damn it, I'm gonna talk my way into a job. This is great. And so <laughs> and so I thought I was gonna be an anchor. Um, needless to say, I couldn't read a teleprompter very well. So that kind of went by the wayside. Then I interned at an agency in Dallas. That advertising agency gave me my job. They gave me my first job or whatever, right out of school. And then one of my biggest sparks in the road came whenever I was at working at Fossil. You know, a local agency reached out and saw some of the stuff I did for Fossil, you know, just as a means of, you know, they didn't want to spend money. So they got some of us around the, you know, the agency to, to do this stuff, right? And they saw one of the pieces and wanted to know if I was interested in doing more. And I was just like, uh, yes, so, okay, cool, perfect. One thing led to another to the point where my, my, my boss was like, hey, you got to pick one. 
like you're missing work. You're coming in late. I don't know what the heck you're doing on lunch hours. I was auditioning, <laughs> um, but you got to figure this out. And that was my fork in the road. Now, mind you, I had been married for six months until that time. Now, mind you, we'd been knowing each other for 10 years. Okay. My high school sweetheart. And um, he was like, hey, I'm with you. If you decide to go ahead and, and just see where this thing leads or whatever, I'm with you. So needless to say, um, loaded up the truck and moved to, it wasn't Beverly. We were in the I, grungier part of Los Angeles. And just went and took a leap of faith because my whole thing was, okay, two things that I always say, why not me? And you never know. And I don't want to live my life with this woulda, coulda, shoulda mentality. So I decided to, you know, take that drive out west and see what happened. What was the harm in, you know, and just trying. And thank God it, it proved to be a pretty, pretty darn good decision. I'd say so. And, and, and I love the fact you said, yeah, why not take that leap? You know, no coulda, woulda, shoulda. I mean, worst case scenario, you would have gone back to the agency. I would have gone back to the agency. And that was my whole thing. It's just like, you know, if I do it and I don't like it, I do it. And I'm just like not getting higher, whatever it is, at least I can say I tried. And I don't have to be 84 years old in a rocking chair talking to my great, great grandbaby. Like, you know, granny really wanted to do blah, blah, blah. No, I can tell him, Hey, I went out, I tried it. You know what I'm saying? And so I just, um, I, that's, that's how I try to live life. And I always try to make sure that I'm aware enough in order to recognize those little gifts, you know, and, and, and like try to connect it. Like, what are you trying to tell me? What are you, Oh, that, Oh, really? You really want me to do? Okay. I, you know, even if I'm scared to actually, you know, challenge myself to just take a leap of faith and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and you mentioned too, with your husband at the time was super supportive and, and everything. And I'm just wondering as an actor, somebody who's been in this business for a while, but how to take a, a huge risk in order to get to where you're at. How important is it to have a significant other or even just a best friend or a go-to person that does have your back? Obviously you want to believe in yourself, but I would imagine it's probably important to have somebody like that behind you, right? You know what? I am never going to take anything away from that because some people are just like, no, I did it on my own. I did it on myself. Let me tell you something. Part of the reason why I was very just like, you know, go get them. Let me try is because I knew somebody had my back. I'm going to I'm going to be real with you and open and honest and vulnerable. I don't know exactly how brave I would have been if I didn't have that support system, because let me tell you something. You don't eat. OK, until you make a paycheck. And for the first, I would say you know, for months or so, I mean, I was working for food and footage, you know, I was, I was here working for food and footage. Yes. I had saved a little bit of something from advertising or whatever, but he was out there holding it down in Dallas, you know, while I was out here. And here's another thing, another little, you know, gym that, you know, God put into my path. I didn't come out here alone. My manager, I met her when I took headshots in Dallas. See, that was another part. Like all these things started happening to where I started getting these jobs and booking these random jobs, you know, the Texas lottery girl, you know, stuff like that, you know, Vanna Black with the big hair and the sequence dress. But she comes out of nowhere. She's taking photos or whatever for this agency. Just so happens that she's like, hey, look, her name is Suze Lanier. If you come out to Los Angeles, I am also a manager. I know someone at an equity waiver theater that I can probably get you on that stage. She also casts for days of our lives. If you come out there, I'm telling you right now, I recognize talent when I see it. I'm like, okay, what in the hell is going on? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. These things did not happen by chance. But if I would have been a little too scared to react to that, then this whole trajectory would have been different. But that's what I'm saying. You get stuff that's put in your path, but whether or not you are brave enough to, to actually take the bait, that's on you, okay? And so for me, I was very blessed to have a husband that, like I said, I, I mean, my high school sweetheart who knows me like nobody's business. And I will say that it's not necessarily important to have a significant other because that significant other can think they're more significant than you are your mm -hmm. career, but my best friend. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. really not like putting some extra on it or anything, but no, he literally is my best friend. Okay. And so he knows me and he also believed in what it is that I had. And he also trusted that if this weren't working out, 
that I would be honest enough with myself and with him to not put a, put us in a really funky position because I was trying to force something that didn't fit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a very, very realistic. I'm a realist. Okay. And so, um, it didn't hurt to try, you know what I'm saying? But I also was much more brave to try because I had my best friend in my corner. So yes, I do not take that for granted. That's awesome. And I appreciate you being honest and, and candid with that. Cause a lot of times it's like, Oh yeah, I just did it myself. And yeah, that's, that's cool if you did, but sometimes people do need a little bit of a nudge, a little bit of that support to Absolutely. make things a lot better. Absolutely. It took a team. It's a good yeah. team. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, I wouldn't have been here and had a place to stay if it weren't for Sue's. I wouldn't have been here and had a, a it, I mean, for a while, I stayed on a couch until my, my husband came out here. Some folks that I met, you know, from a, from a church service. Like, this this whole little journey has been, you would think, uh, just a whole bunch of happenstance when, no, he had a plan. But it's up to you to recognize those opportunities he's putting in your path and make the most of them. That's your responsibility. He'll put it out there, but it's up to you to take a step back and recognize it whenever he puts it out there for you. Well said, well said. And one opportunity that you recognize that you've been a part of now is DC Comics' Young Justice, which <laughs> is streaming on HBO Max. I, <laughs> what an awesome series, what an awesome opportunity. I feel like anytime an actor can be involved in any, any movie is a blessing and, and series, but yeah. to be involved in like Marvel or DC with such a hardcore fan base, in some ways you kind of live forever in your work. So what are your thoughts on your, your time uh, and young justice? And, and yeah. what do you think about just like the overall fan response over these years? It's crazy, dude. I mean, I had no idea how, I mean, the comic book world is a hot. I mean, when you're talking about loyalists, diehard fans, that is what I'm dealing with right now. And it's just, these people have been waiting on it for so long because for a while we didn't know whether or not Young Justice was coming back, right? But yes, they came back with the whole Young Justice Phantoms deal. And I was so excited because a lot of the characters or whatever, some of them kind of, you know, went, I guess, to another planet. I don't know where quite, you know, they met it, but thank goodness, you know, Raquel actually made the cut, you know? And so, this past season, for instance, they have me, and I can't even tell you the names of the other characters, but there are like six different characters that I'm doing voiceovers for. Now, how in the world they trusted me with all that, I have no idea, but they did. And it was awesome. I mean, the storyline. So uh, Rocket, of course, is a superhero and Dr. Lynn Pierce is the doctor. And um, she has a son. And what the storyline is that uh, her son is autistic. Right. So he has autism. And so they've incorporated a lot of realistic storylines into this season. You know, so whether or not, you know, our comic book fiend or whatever it is, there's a lot of real world, you know, humanity or whatever that they've injected into this season. And it was just so like, wow, you know, they're really and truly trying to, you know, bring um, realistic life stuff into an animated, you know, series. And I mean, I think that's commendable. And I think that's very, uh, that's what DC Comics does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's just something that they do, which is part of the reason why you do have the fandom. I mean, these people live for this stuff, you know? And so it's just, it's just very exciting to even say that I'm part of that family, a part of that DC universe. Like, you know, people find out like, what you do? I was just like, yeah. I do that too. <laughs> and dude, this year they had me singing on this thing. I was like, "You're hang on, hang on. You're a singer now too. You do voiceovers, you do regular acting, you do all kinds of genres, and now you're now you're a singer." Dude, they had medical me student. Sing. They had me sing. Now wait, 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 wait. Let me go ahead and bring it back. I'm not really singing. I'm more like chanting, but I call it singing, okay? Because I still had to harmonize. But it was just like, wait, guys, you want me to do like what? And so they coached me through it, and I was like. Oh my God. I was like, when I heard it played back, I was like, that's me. I was like, that is just so crazy. But that's just a testament to the team that they, they trusted that I could do it. And they were there to, to guide me through the whole process. It was, it was pretty darn cool. It was an amazing experience. So I'm just going to go ahead on and pray. If you guys check it out and you guys really get into this season that we'll go ahead and have another continuation, uh, continuation of Young Justice. So very excited for you guys to see that. Cool. So check it out on HBO Max, DC's Young Justice. Do you have some time for some quick rapid fire questions? We always like to ask guests like some random questions just to get oh, to know better. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have all my coffee, but yeah, shoot. Okay. okay. 
Let me favorite... see if my brain's working. All right, there we go. Favorite late night snack? Popcorn. Not a bad choice. And you're an actor. You're... Were you a movie goer growing up? Did you like going to the movies, grabbing some popcorn? You know what? I did it because my parents were so strict and we were in the backwoods of Louisiana. So I didn't really see that many movies. The first thing I saw was, was it called It? I think it was just called it. It was like this glob of, of, of um, I don't know what you call it, Plano or whatever that was like killing everybody in the town <laughs> or something. And then I saw Annie, I saw Rocky. And then I forgot what else I saw. Like, honestly, we were just like homebodies and we didn't go to the movies very much. It wasn't until I got into like college that I really had my real movie experience. So no, popcorn is just like a guilty pleasure. And my, my daughter makes fun of me of me for doing it, but I pop it up myself. I don't put it in the, you know, the little bag or anything like that. I try to be a little healthier and I pop it on the uh, stove top. So who's your favorite actor besides yourself? Denzel, Denzel. Nobody does it like Denzel. Let me tell you something. My goal in life was to have that Denzel tear. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You remember in Glory? how he had that one tear coming. Like he had no emotion whatsoever. You see the pain on his face, but he had that one tear come out. My goal, my goal as an actor was to have that one tear Denzel moment. And I had it twice. So I'm just saying right now, when you can go ahead and mimic any Denzel performance, especially that glory tear right there, you, you, you good. So I actually have had two opportunities to do it. One was in Never and Again, which is also directed by Laz Rael, and also um, For the Love of Ruth. Those are two opportunities for me to do my Denzel tier. So Denzel, hands down. Shout out to Denzel, and great job on that. Thank what's your you. most what's your most <laughs> what's your most awkward moment as an actor? Ugh, a specific instance. I will say that I always feel awkward at a Hollywood, like a um what do you call a premiere party or something? I'm an introvert. I don't do those well. And really? So I, can't, I can't tell. <laughs> I know. I know. Because guess what? We're one-on-one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So when I'm with my, my company of friends or we're one-on-one or when I'm actually doing the work on set, that's one thing. But when it has to do with these high highfalutin parties and all this other stuff or being on the carpet and doing all that stuff, that is so like, uncomfortable for me like that whole process is uncomfortable for me so yeah I'll pull it off because I'm 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 this fan okay so I can pull it off but I mean that whole thing as a whole is just awkward for me so because I can't think of anything like specific I'll just say that that whole thing that whole Hollywood glitz glamour red carpet crap not my gig not my favorite I do it if I have to but I prefer not to yeah, I'm with you there. I'm I'm pretty outgoing as you can see. And you know, one on one, like I'm good with people. But yeah, parties and stuff, I kind of just I'm like, okay, like I'll put on the face, I'm cool, but sometimes I just want to chill. Just go on the yeah, yeah, that's just not my that's not my natural habitat at all. No. What's the biggest piece of advice you give on success? Look for those little nuggets. Just have your your eyes open, be very real and honest with yourself. Don't force it. If it don't fit, don't force it. You know, don't make yourself say, well, I should like this or I should do that. Again, if I had done that and forced some stuff or whatever in my career or not have adapted, you know, my mindset and been like, no, you know, that's just not quite what I thought it was. So I'm going to go ahead on and explore other options. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what life is. It's a whole bunch of, you know, take a left, take a right, you know, figure it out and do what's good for your spirit, you know, what nurtures your spirit. So, you know, if, if anything, I would say that I was born with a sixth sense in that I can oftentimes recognize those little opportunities for, huh? Okay. So that's where, okay. All right. I, I don't think that's why I'm supposed to be going, but I will, I'll let you lead me and guide me. And so that's kind of how I've, ended up here (laughs) not because I planned it not because I focused on it and that was my goal I just kind of took the opportunity to say okay well if that's what you say you lead I'll follow you know love that so kind of like equanimity like okay this is happening to me now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll with it yeah just recognize those things or whatever be aware of it and just kind of you know do what makes you feel good man 
do the right thing. Do, you know what I'm saying? As a person, do the right thing, but do whatever tickles your spirit, man. Life is short. And in one sentence or less, why should Ooh, one people- sentence? You know, I almost shut up. Okay, what? One <laughs> in, one, sentence. in one sentence or less, why should people watch hashtag unknown on Amazon Prime? Because it'll have your ass on the edge of your seat and you won't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> ah, that's one sentence. Yeah, that, yeah. I love it. There you go. (laughs) There you go. And and where can fans find you online? Oh, okay. So Instagram, I'm Denise underscore Butte. That's B-O-U-T-T-E. And um, I also have culinary products out there. So Louisiana Girl, and that's Creole Cuisine. Right now, we only have spices. That that is W-E-E-Z-I-A-N-A Girl. That is also on Instagram and uh, on Facebook. I don't tweet, guys. Sorry about that, but I don't tweet. And my daughter does a little TikTok for us. So check out Louisiana on TikTok. Oh, man. Talented family. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) She's got to pay for uh, Come on, dude. She's got boarding and housing and stuff to pay for. She's got to do this. (laughs) She got to do something for mama to pay the bills. Come on now. Agreed. Agreed. And, And real quickly, besides hashtag unknown, besides Young Justice, is there anything else you have coming up you'd like us to know about on the horizon? Do yeah, so never and again, which was also done with last, that's still streaming on BET Plus right now, so that's awesome. I got a Christmas movie that's coming okay. out, it's called A Rich Qu- uh, Christmas. That came through um, Mega Mind Media, who I'd worked with before on a uh, movie called Secrets. So that's with Bill Bellamy, that's coming at you or whatever for this holiday season, I think at the end of November, if I'm not mistaken. But that's going to be coming up. Um, And then I have that role that I was telling you about or whether that really grungy, grimy role is going to be out sometime next year called uh, Angie's Cure. So that's coming at you next year, too. So I'm I'm really excited for folks to see what's going on because we got a few little irons on the fire. So I'm excited. But first up, first and foremost is unknown. So check it out on Amazon Prime. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So if you guys see it now, we're going to get a sequel. So, you know, challenge, baby. Bring us home. Bring us a sequel.